Hey. Hey. What's going on? How you doing? Uh, well, uh, getting over the flu. <laughs> Did you have the rice a uh, It wasn't the rice a but it was the uh, San Francisco tree. It was? Yes, yes. Almost a month. And I still got it in jazz. Yeah, it sounds like it. That makes my voice deeper. Yeah. yeah. You want to be an announcer for us? No. Why not? Because nobody wants Kermit the Frog as their announcer. <laughs> So what are you doing today, Lee? Well, right it's good now, to actually. Wait, it's good to see you. That's nice to see you. Thank you. Yeah. Right now we're uh, standing inside of the, uh, the old fifty Ford pickup uh, fenders. Yeah. Because you guys had to do some serious surgery by moving the uh, with the wheel wells, so that the fenders fit the truck now. Yeah. Um, it's something that I didn't even know about. So uh, yeah, you guys will learn it with me. They had to move the fender, the fenders. Or had to move the wheel well on the fenders themselves yeah. to fit the truck. So you can see all the nice little stitch work and all that kind of stuff and the, the fancy smancy artwork that Earl does. I'm the guy that gets to sand down all the uh, old crap. My crap. Yeah, his crap. My crap. Because here he is. My crap. All right. All right. Lee? Muchas gracias. No, no, no. Señor. Gracias. <laughs> All right. Fender wells, he's uh, or the fender wheel wells, I should say. Uh, we just got done sanding the daylights out of them and prepping them, and now they've been blown down and they're ready. Sounds good. Yeah. I don't know why he's got me talking because I got a frog in my throat. Huh. Ribbit, ribbit. <laughs> well, it's good to see you. Uh, you know, yeah, just throw, yeah. just wash it down with that coat. That's right. No product placement. Stand oh, gosh. Copyrighted. Right. Alrighty, got the spacesuit on. Reason being is because when you shoot into the corners and cracks and crevices, it wants to funnel and blow back on you. Not a good thing, especially in recessed areas. They're really nasty for doing that. And it really screws up the visor. So since it funnels back the way it does on us, I want to turn the air pressure down to seven PSI running, which is really low. But what it does is it makes the paint droplets a lot bigger. So what we want to do is not do a full pull on the needle. I'm going to back the needle into the gun a little bit so I don't get a full pull out of it. And it just slows it down and makes me, it basically slows it down and then you can take your time trying to get all of the areas really nice. If you just went at a normal PSI rating around 10, 12, we got a good pattern on the on your spray out, it's gonna be a bad day trying to paint something like this. That's great if you're painting something that's curved like this or flat, but when you're curved concave like that, it's gonna blow right back on you and you don't want that. Um, especially if you're just wearing a regular respirator like this. We use a full face one here, but what it does is it blasts the helmet so bad, my visor get, immediately just gets destroyed with paint. So again, just a little tidbit. Um, most painters out there know this already, but for like someone who's just like a weekend uh, hobbyist doing this, just kind of take your time, slow it down. That way you don't get overspray everywhere and it's just a little more detailed. So. With that said, I'm gonna go ahead and shoot this. Okay, I'm back and I have our gun loaded. And what I have is about three ounces in this container here and we're gonna shoot zinc chromate in here, the Mr. Nasty stuff. So I'm not a fan of this stuff in terms of health reasons, but I'm a big fan of it in terms of protection for the panel. I don't have to worry about anything going forward when I use this stuff, it's pretty good. Uh, I've been impressed with the results. We've even tested a panel where we sprayed one, threw it outside the back here, and we let it go for a whole year and nothing touched it, not even the sun broke it down. If you use like 415 uh, Rust Bullet or any other product out there that's a converter or it goes over and locks it, it is UV susceptible really bad and it will break down. So it needs to be coated over or put in an area where you 
you're never going to see daylight. So that's kind of like what we do. We do use 415, but we use it only in areas you'll never see, like inside a quarter panel or down low in a rocker area or behind something. We never really use it on a panel like this here. Um, we just like to use this type of product. So with that said, enough rambling. I'm going to go shoot this panel, and I'll show you how we do it. And uh, we're going to zinc chromate, two nice easy coats, and then we're going to put the Rival down, which is a real nice product that Zalta has. It kind of is a substitute for Imron, but I'm impressed with the results. I think you will too. I'll show you. I got two nice full coats on here. Went real easy, it laid out like really smooth. I gotta let this kick, I can't paint over it, it'll have a bad reaction. So we're gonna wait about a couple hours here. We're gonna let this tack off. We're sitting about 72 degrees and about 45% humidity. So it should kick pretty good. And we got a good flow down in the booth. So we're gonna be all right here. I'm gonna let this set up and we'll shoot the rifle. Okay, we're using a 3M PPS. We're going to be using the 20 ounce cup. And uh, what it does is it's got its own strainer in there. It's really nice. So you don't have to strain it. You just mix in here, put this on, put the lock ring on, and we're ready to go. So the paint we're using today is Rival. It's an Exalta uh, product. And it's really, really nice. It's an industrial. And now it's weird. It's a six to one mix. Another thing we've noticed with this product um, and it's just a silly footnote. Um, you shake it up in the shaker and stuff like that and it gets warm out and the can will actually expand in there. The chemical reaction of shaking and agitating this will actually pop the lid. You want to kind of open the can away from you. It's kind of a good practice to do. Open the dang thing away from you. It will go poof. It just builds pressure in there. Same thing when you put the cap on this and you agitate it, make sure before this is on and you agitate it, okay, you lock this down, put your finger up the hole. I know it's kind of perverted, but you want to get the air out of here so it doesn't expand this and blow the lid off. It will pop off, and if it pops off, it's just going to go everywhere and make a huge mess, especially when you're locking your tank gun down. All right, guys, uh, it's kind of a cold day, so it's not going to do it. No, it did a little bit. It, it uh, hissed off. But on hot days, man, this thing will actually just explode right off of here. I don't know why, but some paints do that. Uh, clear does not do that, by the way. Clear doesn't do that. Uh, clear might do it if you like had a full container all the way to the top and you agitated it. It may do that a little bit, but for some reason the paint does it more. I'm going to mix in my 6 to 1. Now we're only putting two nice easy coats on this. You're just basically covering it. It puts a good hard shell on here. You don't have to worry about rock chips or anything that's so much. I hear that from a lot of people. Ah, you, you should undercoat it and stuff like that. And over the years of restoration, undercoating is not always the nicest thing underneath a, a beautiful truck. So if this truck was going to be driven in salt roads and every day and just get hammered, then I, I guess, hey, you know, what the heck. One thing about Rival, it tacks quick, but doesn't cure quick. That makes any kind of sense. So in other words, you can spray it, walk away, come back 15, 20 minutes later and put another coat on it, and it sticks like glue. Um, don't try to push it too hard. It's not gonna solve and pop so much, but it will run. So nice easy coats wins the race, especially on angles and stuff like that. It's because its viscosity is a little thin. And then here we go. 
put this down and do that and then you're good then you can agitate it and you can actually see the bag is starting to move it's expanded a little bit but if we didn't do that we had a full bag in there we would have an actual leak maybe around the seam or it would actually pop or it would spit out the gun and you don't want none of that just creates a bad day okay let's go shoot this product so we're in the booth, we're ready to paint. We have our rival all mixed up in a six to one ratio. I'm gonna set the gun up, set the pressure up. Um, I'm gonna raise the pressure up to where I was very low on the chromate. I'm gonna bring it up a couple so I can get a nice decent pattern. And I'm just gonna have to back it off here a little bit and narrow the pattern down so I can get up in the cracks and crevices. So I'm gonna do that, but it's gonna take me a little time. Now what I'm trying to do is I'll try to put the camera right where we're spraying to show you how it flows out. I'm gonna try and make it as easy as I can so it doesn't blow back. Kill the camera, kill me or anything because this stuff stinks um, like anything, you know? But uh, it ain't that bad. It's bad, that bad, bad, okay. Okay, we're done. I'm going to go clean the gun. Um, these are going to set up. It's going to take a full day for them to set up. Um, they'll be tacky in a couple hours. Um, it does take longer than like our clears and our our other substrates. Um, it's just the slower activating, but it does tack off pretty quick. So it'll come down to about 20, 30 minutes from now. Nothing. If anything tries to get in at that point, we can polish it out. Um, we're really not going to polish the insides of the fenders per se. They really don't need it. They're going to level out really nice. This stuff, when it settles back, it shrink wraps like and looks really good. And I'm not seeing anything out of the ordinary for an inside of the fender. All right, I'm going to go clean the gun. What's neat about this is if you have a little bit left like we do, we have just a little bit in there. You just put this in there. Put a cap. Keeps it nice and take the liner. We like to put the liners upside down. That way the strainer doesn't get clogged because if you turn it the other way, the air is going to get inside there and kind of screw up the liner. So if we turn it that way, we can go ahead and plug and play real quick. Yeah, the fenders were no small feet, I'm sure. I, I didn't things. realize you had to move the actual wheel wells on those fenders. Yeah, that was not a thing I wanted to do, buddy. Oh, but, that's... Uh, at least we got the insides of them painted and everything, so hey. You know, those are pretty, too. Not bad, yep. not bad. Um, you know, like I say, I'm going to revet this. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to revisit this all again tomorrow. So, All right, everyone, that's pretty much all we got for today. Boring. Um, 
Yeah. Boring, boring, boring. Thanks for joining us today at this little tiny shop we call Classic Car Creations. Take care. Yeah, I'll later, alligators. Right on, guys. <laughs> Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah.